confidence and self-esteem are two of the most important things you can have when it comes to the friendship process. The main reason for this is because confidence and self-esteem help to make up your overall self-awareness. And as I've mentioned previously, self-awareness is one of the most powerful aspects of friendship and indeed of life in general. So I'm going to show you exactly how important confidence and self-esteem is in four major areas of the friendship process. First of all, when you're looking for potential friends, when you're trying to turn a potential friend into an actual friend, when you're organizing activities with friends, and especially when you're having conversations with friends. Now, I know that there's often confusion around the definitions of these two terms, so let's get that out of the way first. Confidence is made up of your skills and abilities. You feel more confident when you've achieved certain goals and objectives in your life. Self-esteem, on the other hand, is how you feel about yourself. It's your degree of self-worth and how much self-love you have. There are many people who are confident but who have low self-esteem. And the classic example is people who have worked hard in their careers or on their romantic relationships but who haven't invested a lot of time into getting to know themselves or more importantly, getting to love themselves. Now, I realize that for many people, the idea of loving yourself may be a foreign concept or even something that sounds conceited. And this is why it's important to know the difference between having a good amount of self-love and being narcissistic. So according to Oxford's dictionary, narcissism is the excessive interest or admiration of oneself and one's physical appearance. Whereas self-love, on the other hand, is the regard for one's own well-being and happiness. So yes, there's nothing wrong with having a good amount of regard for one's own well-being and happiness. So let's take a look at some examples where confidence and self-esteem will greatly affect your friendship process. Number one, looking for potential friends. People with a good amount of confidence and self-esteem know their value because they're proud of their accomplishments. They have a high sense of self-worth and self-love and they know what they can provide as a potential friend to someone else. As a result, they have no problem walking up to strangers and introducing themselves and making a great first impression. As you may recall, one of your previous worksheets was about listing various things that you can offer as a friend. And yes, as you might have guessed, those are friendship skills that contribute to your level of confidence. People with a low amount of confidence and self-esteem will likely sit quietly and wait for others to introduce themselves. Now, there's nothing wrong with being shy as long as you're able to express yourself. The problem with having a lack of confidence and self-esteem is that you may not even realize that it's suppressing your ability to express yourself, which prevents your personality from coming out. If you prevent your personality from coming out, then you're not going to make a very good first impression, and in fact, people are likely to forget your name. Example two, turning a potential friend into an actual friend. People with a good amount of confidence and self-esteem are more likely to take the initiative to exchange contact information with interesting people that they meet because they are much less affected by rejection. This is because they are much more emotionally resilient. That doesn't mean that they're not affected at all by rejection. It just means that their amount of self-worth and self-love may only drop a little bit because it's at such a high level to begin with. Another way to think of it is that self-esteem is like an emotional shield that greatly reduces the impact of rejection. Your emotional shield may be a bit dented by rejection, but if you don't even have an emotional shield, you're much more likely to take those hits directly and to the heart. Example three, organizing activities with friends. People with a good amount of confidence and self-esteem are much more likely to take the initiative to plan activities with their friends because they are confident in their organizer skills and with their emotional shield of self-esteem. They're not as affected if people don't reply to their invitations. However, people with a low amount of confidence and self-esteem will likely not take the initiative at all because they are lacking in organizer skills. And they would be much more likely to be concerned with rejection in advance because they know how much it will affect them if people don't respond to their invitations. And finally, example number four, having conversations with friends. People with a good amount of confidence and self-esteem will be much more likely to be open and honest and vulnerable with their friends about their thoughts and feelings, especially when it comes to delicate, personal, or controversial topics of conversation. 
That's because having a good amount of confidence, especially when it comes to conversation skills, which are part of friendship skills, gives you much more comfort to speak more freely and to speak your mind. And having more self-esteem means that you don't care so much if someone doesn't agree with you. And you're less likely to be offended by others since you've got your emotional shield. People with a low amount of confidence won't feel as open, honest, and be comfortable being vulnerable with their friends because they're probably lacking in good conversation skills. And without having a good amount of self-esteem, they may feel very exposed and vulnerable in delicate, personal, and controversial conversations because they have no emotional shield to protect them. It's now time for you to find the worksheets for confidence and self-esteem and to take inventory of these areas for yourself. You may just be surprised on how much confidence and self-esteem you actually have, but you've never really taken the time to take inventory of it in this way before. In the next section, we're going to completely change gears by covering health and fitness and how it greatly affects your ability to have a great social life. So I'll see you in the next section.